Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to do some welding with 7014. That's a rod that you haven't really seen on the channel here before, but I've received over 100 comments from people who swear by this electrode. So I figured I'd give it a try. I'll tell you right now, I really liked it. Is it going to become my new favorite rod? I don't know. Let's see. So the first thing we want to look at is how easy is it to strike an arc, not just the first time, but multiple times with the electrode. So we're going to need to use one of the exercises that I have in each of my online courses where we put a number of tack welds along a lap joint. The electrode size I'm using is 3 seconds of an inch and I'll turn my machine to 75 amps to get started. That's at the low end of the range for this electrode. So I have put in a tack weld and then another one and I'll just keep going all the way along this plate to see how that goes relative to other rods. And I'll tell you right now, it's really easy to strike an arc with this electrode compared to others, um, though you still need to have the skill necessary to do it. One thing I did notice is that the electrode does burn back into the flux. That's pretty similar to a 7018, but one thing that you don't get, or at least I didn't get in the whole time I was welding, is that slag that drips over the end you have to really chip off or flick out when you uh, break your arc that you get with a 7018. So it's definitely easier than 7018 to relight as long as you break that flux off with your glove. Now the tack welds came out pretty good except for one that I totally missed the joint but that's not the rod's fault. Let's run a couple lap joints all the way across. I'll strike an arc at the beginning and just run steadily across. No kind of rod manipulation or anything like that. I'm just feeding the rod in to maintain a nice short arc length, steady travel speed as I put this bead in here. Now let's take a look at this. The first thing you might notice is all the spatter along the front edge here. I did find this electrode to be a little bit more spattery than other rods that I've run. I don't know if that's just the particular brand that I have or if that's the nature of the beast here with 7014. As far as slag goes, uh, I like when I can just rake over my slag. That wasn't the case here. It did take a little bit of tapping to get it to break loose, but it wasn't too bad. And after brushing it off, that weld is definitely, you know, good enough for anything that I do. So I'm really happy with it. And I ran the other side and got just as good of a result over there. Now I'm going to turn the machine up to 80 amps to run a T joint with that same 3 seconds of an inch electrode on 1 8 inch thick plates. It's welding along really smoothly, just like before, and everything's filling in, and I can see where the slag is following behind my weld puddle. That brighter area is the weld puddle, and you can see that slag just falling with a C-shape right behind, covering over things, which means it's not mixing in, which is a problem that you get a lot with 6013. Definitely seems to be easier to keep those two separate with a 7014. Big thumbs up on that. So afterwards, once again, it did take a little bit of chipping to get the slag off, but brushing it off, I came out with something that uh, seems to be good enough. Now let's try welding a little bit thicker material. I've turned the amperage up here to 90. The range on this electrode is clear up over 100, which is pretty typical for a 3 seconds of an inch electrode of any type that has some iron powder in the uh, flux coating as well. I'm welding on some 3 16 inch thick material here, and it's laying in pretty nicely. Once again, I can see it really penetrating down into the material. Once again, no rod manipulation. I'm just running a smooth stringer bead right in there. And after chipping and brushing that off, it came out pretty smooth once again. So I got to tell you, I really liked running the 7014. Um, it came in really smooth. It's easy to restrike. It doesn't mix the slag and weld puddle together like you get with a 6013. So 7014, my new favorite electrode. Well, no, I'm still going to stick with my 7018. That might just be from experience. You know, here in the United States, the most common electrodes in industry are 6010 and 7018. Those are the only two that I ever welded with when I was going to trade school. And uh, so they've really just stuck with me. I've done a little bit with 6013, which is the most common around the world. I actually did a video a week ago where I showed how to avoid some of the issues with slag mixing in, where it doesn't really fuse to both sides. So if you're struggling with that, I'll link it in the description, but you might find 7014 to be good alternative for that. And I'm definitely gonna keep some around the shop for little odd jobs here and there could be really handy. Hey, well, I'll link a few videos in the description below that might help you if you are just learning to weld to really get the hang of it and pick it up faster, as well as my online welding courses. Uh, I don't charge a lot for them and I go through in a comprehensive step-by-step -step way. Check those out if you think that might be a good fit for you. And thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.